We come to the last few commands. The write command uh, is pretty obvious. It writes things out. Where does it write them to? It writes them to whatever the current unit number is. If you haven't changed the unit number, it will be your screen. If you have changed it by the use command, it will write to that file. Uh, if assuming the file is open for output. If it's not open for output, you have a problem. You can't write to an input file, as a general rule. Um, the write command has a simple format. Um, you put down constants and variables in a comma-separated list with formatting commands inserted as needed. The first line there, which says write, quote, hello world, comma, exclamation point, writes out the phrase hello world, and then a line feed, new line character. On the second one, we have uh, two variables, i and j, with i contains hello and j contains world, and we write i, comma, a blank, in quotes, comma, j, comma, exclamation point, and that writes out hello, a space, world, and then a new line character. Exclamation point, as we've seen before, is the new line character. Um, the next line is the same um, with regard to i and j. i is hello and j is world. Uh, but we have a new line character in place of the blank. So it'll write hello on one line, world on the next line, and then skip to the line following that. Uh, finally, we have an example where we're writing out the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we use the, f the tab control, question mark 10, as you see there. That means, well, first of all, it writes out 1. You don't need to put um, numbers in quotes. You can, but it doesn't have any effect. Unless you want leading blanks and leading zeros, uh, then it can have an effect. But it writes out one, and then the, the, uh, the question mark 10 means to skip to column 10. Now, if you're beyond column 10, it'll move to column 10 on the next line. Then we write out two, then we skip to column 20, we write out three, and so forth. And at the very end, we get two exclamation points. Um, bang, as they call them in Linux, bang, bang, means skip two lines. Um, so there'll be a blank line between the uh, last of the, the output line and where the cursor presently is on the screen. The question mark uh, tab operator can be followed by an expression. The expression will be evaluated, and that will be the tab you go to. That will be where you uh, space out to. Uh, there's also the pound sign, which is the form feed, uh, which is the uh, new page character. I don't think it's used very much anymore because we tend not to write directly to printers, but it is a uh, form feed uh, character that gets written. Next we come to the execute command. The execute command is somewhat peculiar to mumps. Uh, in other languages like PHP and uh, Lisp and a few others, they have something similar to, that, to this, but um, it is a rather odd command. Uh, it's generally frowned upon by people in the software engineering trade. What it does is it executes a string as though it had been a command in the a source program. We see the first example here. We're setting the variable a equal to the string. Set b is equal to 10 plus 456 write b. Close quote. That's a string. It looks like a mums command, and of course it is. Um, two mums commands, as a matter of fact, but it's in a string. I could write that out, and you would simply see that phrase. However, on the next line, when we execute the, vari the variable a, we are executing the contents of the string as though they had been commands in the program. And what will happen is we'll see 466 written out. Uh, the next example um, is a little bit beyond that. We set a equal to the string, set c equal to 1 plus 1, write at c. Now, the, the 1 plus 1 is surrounded by two double quotes. Uh, that means it's really one quote in the, in the actual text. So we are setting the variable c, when we actually run this, will be set to the string 1 plus 1. Okay, they will, it'll, it'll actually be one quote, because double quotes are used when we mean one quote inside of a quoted string. It's the way Fortran did it in PL1 and many other languages. We don't use backslashes in mumps. Uh, now we get to the write at C. That's another form that's called indirection. It's an indirection operator. Uh, we'll get to it in a little bit. What it does is it's, it, it's used as an operand. It's used as an expression. It causes the interpreter to execute the contents of the variable as an expression. Now C is an expression. C will contain at that point in time 1 plus 1. That's an expression. At C executes that expression, and the answer is 2. 
So we've got two levels of indirection here, um, we call it. Uh, one will be the larger one with A, where we've got two commands, the set command and a write command. And then in the write command, we've got another level of indirection where we're interpreting or executing the contents of C. They're slightly different. The indirection operator, the at sign, is used uh, in, in expressions, whereas the execute command is used to execute entire lines, which may contain execute commands and indirection. So when we execute A, 2 gets written out, because it it, what we're really executing is set C is equal to the string 1 plus 1, and then we're saying write out the value of 1 plus 1 at C causes that to be inserted there and executed as though it had been there as one, 1 plus 1 had been there and of course we'll see it too. Now the next one carries it a little further. Um, we, put into the we put into the variable B the value A. That's just a quoted string. It's just the quoted string A. Okay, but when I say execute at B it goes in there and it substitute it's, it's an expression and the value that gets inserted into the execute is a and it executes a which contains the line we saw, saw above and two will be written out again this gets complicated the final uh, thing is um write a mumps program that does anything and you see it there you know, four there's supposed to be two blanks after the four doesn't really show up here but there are two blanks which means forever read x execute x and it'll loop and do that over and over again. What does this program do? Anything you tell it to do. Whatever you type in to the read will be executed by the execute. Now, presumably, you're going to type in mumps commands. Uh, but um, if you don't type in valid mumps commands, of course, the execute will you know, fail because uh, it wasn't valid syntax. Uh, obviously, software engineers don't like this because they look at a program and they see something like for read x, execute x, and they say, what does it do? <laughs> when they don't know. Um, that's usually not a good thing from the software engineering point of view. But it does have its uses. Um, you can do some rather clever things by putting s snippets of code into your database. Snippets of code which interpret a level or a node in the database. Uh, for example, verification, some kind of a bit, of bit of code that could be used to verify a value to be inserted there. And you just execute it on the fly when you're running. For whatever it's worth, it exists and it is used. The final one, number 59 there, is Z commands. The Z commands are whatever the implementer wants them to be. They are not implementation defined. Every implementation has some of them. You'll have to check with your implementation. All right, here's a few live examples using the execute and indirection. I go into my version of mumps and we say something like set A is equal to um, quote set uh, B equals 1, 2, 3, set C equals um, 4, 5, 6, uh, set uh, D equals um, uh, B divided by C, doesn't really matter, um, B divided by C, write uh, D, new line character. So now I didn't have any, uh, there's no embedded quotes in here because these are all uh, numerics. Had I put, had strings in here, I would have had to use double quotes because it's within a larger string. So that's, that is a string, if I've typed everything correctly. And if I write it out, you can see its contents. Um, it's just simply a string which has contents which look like a line of mumps. And if I use it with the execute, um, execute A, it'll... Uh, do the three, uh, the three assignments and write out the result. And there's the answer. So um, it's a very powerful tool. It obviously can be misused um, because obviously it's very hard to verify a program if you can't see the program. And a lot of these uh, snippets of code are actually stored in a database. It creates the unusual situation as the database becomes somewhat self-defining is that at different levels of the database you actually have um, the necessary code to manipulate that part of the database, it, it creates some interesting effects. The other one is the, ind um, the indirection operator. Um, so if I say uh, set A equals to quote 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, whatever you want to do, um, oops, I'm putting pluses, um, 2 plus 3 uh, pl uh, plus 4, yeah. I'll get it right eventually. Uh, underscore would have worked there because it is a concatenation operator. But all right, so hopefully I've typed it. I've got two in there twice. We'll let it be. Um, write out um, a, and it's a string. If I say write out at a, I get the answer. 
get the answer of what is in there. In one case it writes out the contents of A, in the other case it writes out the evaluation of what is in A. And that's what the ampersand operator does. It evaluates the contents of a string. And it can be used, as was noted, inside of a, um, in, inside of a um, execute. So if I were to say set B equal um, write at A, remember A is still valid. Well, let's put an exclamation point there. All right. Um, if I say write B, of course it's that. If I say execute B, it writes out 12 because um, it's as though I had write, typed in write at A exclamation point directly into the interpreter.